Boo! Yep, this is another one of those spooky videos. How's it going guys, it's Nate here. And Skyrim is a land of sprawling cities, gorgeous mountaintops, and beautiful forests. It's hard to load up the Elder Scrolls V and not get that urge to experience all these amazing environments. However, there are a few places in the game that aren't quite as welcoming as the ones I just described. Haunted caves that give us the chills. Ancient laboratories that once housed blood-curling experiments. Some of Skyrim's settings are very eerie indeed. That said, it's always the scary stuff that piques our interest the most and leaves us intrigued. Even if it makes falling asleep a little bit difficult. So, gather around the fire and settle in, as we dive right into the top 5 creepiest locations in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, we have Haldir's Cairn, a large ancient Nordic ruin within a cave in Falkreath. Upon first setting foot in this place, your attention will immediately be drawn to the large blue light emanating from a pile of stones, or cairn, at the center of the room. Around these rocks lie the bodies of three bandits, as well as some of their left-behind camping gear. Clearly something's not right. Thankfully, not too far away, resting comfortably on a pillar is a journal that belonged to one of these fallen men, and it tells a frightening tale. Evidently, the dead bandits we find here used to be members of a much larger clan, operating out of Lost Knife Hideout. But, for whatever reason, these folks fled their group, and eventually ended up taking shelter in this cave. Their first few days passed uneventfully. However, soon, the author of this diary, Argeus, notes that his companions started acting... well, weird. They became sloppy and slow in their movements and speech, eventually growing totally unresponsive, just staring off into the void all day. Needless to say, Argeus was quite frustrated, seeing as he was left the only one hunting for food, but just wrote it off as his buddies being sick or the victims of some strange illness. However, in his final writings, it becomes clear that what was possessing Argeus' friends was more than a mere disease and he too seems to be gripped by the same force. The last paragraphs of his journal read as follows. Quote, We are not alone. I can hear him now. Someone, speaking in my mind. Old. Powerful. Haldir, that's the name. He wants something from us. Needs us to stay for the magic to work. I tried to run. Can't. Just like them. Rain jumped first. Onto the cairn. That's what Master wants. Blood, sacrifice, power to live again. His magic, I can feel it pulsing in my blood. He's draining us. We'll serve him soon. Our bodies, our souls, just like the others. They're waiting. It's my turn now. End quote. Indeed, this location, as will quickly be proven, is possessed by Haldir a spectral draugr who feeds on the souls of the living, using his powers to enthrall his victims and lure them into taking their own lives, specifically by jumping onto this pile of stones. After fighting our way through the rest of the dungeon, fiercely defended by the enslaved spirits of Haldir's past victims, we can finally confront this evil entity in somewhat of a climactic boss battle. And, if victorious, the Dragonborn can ensure that he never again claims another life. Fittingly, after Haldir is defeated, the blue light we saw earlier will fade away, and the pile of stones will be toppled, reduced to rubble, signifying that Haldir's reign of terror is over. Next on our list, we journey to the Rift, specifically Redwater Den. It's a large skooma den, cleverly hidden beneath a seemingly isolated and insignificant cabin. When you enter, you'll be prompted to try some of this establishment's custom red water skooma, which is apparently better than the normal stuff. A look around at any of the clearly sick addicts here should be more than enough to warn you that doing so is a very bad idea. But if you're unfazed and decide to purchase and consume a bottle anyway, You'll pass out, only to awake in a cage, guarded by a pair of vampires, talking about drinking your blood. If you just wait around in the cell for too long, they'll actually eventually kill you, so you're gonna want to break out. 
And once you do, a number of journals left behind will allow us to piece together what's really been going on here. This whole operation was started years ago, by an ancient vampire named Venaris Vulpin, who came to Skyrim in search of the Blood Spring, a mythical fountain that's said to produce a liquid capable of giving his kind infinite power. Venaris's quest soon led him to the Rift, where after weeks of digging and searching, he found the Blood Spring, though was soon disappointed to discover that its waters didn't give him the powers he had hoped for. Although not all was lost, some of the Vampire Lord's followers found out that the liquid was still incredibly addictive, and caused frequent users to become disorientated, lose their memories, and often pass out. So Venaris, being the clever fellow he was, built a skooma den above the fountain, and mixed the Bloodspring's waters with his product. So, when unsuspecting patrons come in for their fix, they'd grow disorientated and become easy prey for the vampires, who just keep their victims constantly under the spring's influence, effectively turning them into permanent food sources that will never resist. Those addicts we saw earlier in the den were all being feasted upon by Varnus and friends. I guess they did find their infinite source of strength after all. Thankfully, with a strong stomach and a little bit of elbow grease, we can put an end to this horrifying scheme. Coming in at number 3, on the island of Solstheim, the Dovahkin can stumble upon White Ridge Barrow. It's a centuries-old ancient Nordic burial tomb that's lately been the home of some very dark experiments. You see, relatively recently, two Dark Elf siblings, Murilar and Servos Rendas, set up shop here in order to conduct some research on Solstheim's native population of albino spiders. Using a special machine the two created called an imbuing chamber, after months of experimentation, they were able to create a number of new spider species, infused with various elements, including fire, frost, and even illusion magic. They were wildly successful. That was, until Murilar, the sister, began hearing strange chanting coming from below the ruins. She felt there was something of great power beneath her, and slowly went mad trying to figure out what it was. The insanity came with paranoia, that drove her to lock her brother Servos in a cell, and eventually kill him, before completely losing herself and going almost primal. When we enter the Barrow, we'll find the bodies of innumerable Reavers, who likely came here in search of loot, but were instead slaughtered by the modified spiders. A couple of bandits are still alive, but have been enslaved as mind control puppets by a few of the Illusion Arachnids, and will attack on sight, which is quite terrifying if you ask me. Merlar herself is still alive, and can be encountered in one of the chambers, though she'll be hostile, offering no dialogue. On her body is a journal, which reveals the story of this location, and another diary can be looted off of her brother's body, which is still in the cave he died in, that fills in any gaps. Oh, and that chanting which drove the woman crazy in the first place? It turns out to have been a word wall in a sealed off room that the Dragonborn can access if you pull the right levers. Once you've cleared the location of enemies, you'll be able to craft your own spiders using that imbuing chamber the siblings once created. Consider it your reward for conquering this nightmare of a dungeon. For fourth spot, northwest of Fort Amol sits the Abandoned Prison, a once mighty stronghold that housed some of the Empire's most dangerous enemies, now a pile of rubble, slowly being washed away by the river it sits on, and inhabited by the ghosts of her former inmates and guards. A few scattered notes, written by both the fort's former prisoners and staff, explain their unfortunate final moments leading up to their deaths so many years ago. One day, an especially brutal storm was rocking the region, and seemed poised to completely flood the entire prison. The guards were given orders to save themselves and evacuate, leaving the people in their cells to drown. Alas, the prisoners had a plan of their own. They knew the Imperial troops were in the process of bailing and very disorganized, so staged an uprising, overpowering many of the guards in a desperate bid to make an escape via the sewers. We're unsure how many, if anyone, survived this event, but it appears that amidst the chaos, as some soldiers and prisoners clashed while others just made a run for it, 
Most ran out of time, and the structure was flooded before the inmates could escape or the Imperials complete their evacuation. Now, in a horrible irony, decades after their bodies have rotted, this prison continues to trap the restless spirits of its former occupants. And finally, last on our list, the Runevald excavation site is yet another ancient Nordic ruin. But it's not spirits or Draugr that make this place so creepy. It's the people who came after and what happened to them. Some time ago, the ruin was discovered by the Vigilance of Stendar, who believed it may harbor some artifacts valuable to their cause, and began work excavating the site and digging up what they could. However, slowly, something began to go very wrong. An Altmer conjurer named Minorn, who was hiding somewhere within the ruins, began poisoning their minds, secretly using her magical prowess to ever so slowly transform the Vigilance of Stendar here into her personal zombies. The process wasn't by any means a quick one. Some of the Vigilants who were working this site left behind diaries, where within their entries they begin mentioning Minorn sort of randomly, using her name to substitute references to other characters and various gods, before the journals ultimately turn in to flat-out worship of her, praising Minorn as some sort of deity. When we arrive, it'll be too late to save them. The Vigilance of Stendar have been charmed, so to speak. They've been completely enslaved by the Conjurer, and will be very hostile to the player. After fighting our way through this dungeon, as we make our way to the last room, we can face off against Minorn for ourselves. And after we've defeated her, any remaining Vigilance of Stendar still under her influence will simply drop dead. Her spell has been broken at a terrible cost. And with that, we are going to wrap up my top 5 creepiest places in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these locations gave you the chills, and what blood-curling settings should I tackle next? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.